All right, guys, we got TJ versus Henry. This is the semifinals of the Madam Bowl. And we're going to be specifically focusing in on Henry's offensive possessions, trying to learn kind of from the GOAT about just offense in general. And I'm going to be trying to, I guess, basically just uh, deduce from, use some reasoning here uh, to figure out why he does the things that he does. Why does he call certain plays? Why does he call certain combos in certain situations? Um, that is kind of the main uh, purpose of the video. So uh, in this one, Henry actually gets the ball first. So he's going to get the first possession off the bat, just like last game. Henry's very systematic. You're going to see this almost every single time. First, uh, first play, run play. Why do we run the ball there? Because we want to get on a hash mark. We don't want to have our offense to be ran. We don't want to throw the ball in the middle of the field because it can muddy up the reads and make it less consistent. So as you see right here, he is on a hash and now he should see some passing. He might still run here um, just to kind of get in a rhythm, but it looks like he is going to be passing here. Actually, no, I'll checks into a run. He runs his first two plays. Now he's on a third down. Now, again, I'm not hundred percent sure why I run twice in a row. He's done that a lot. I would assume maybe just to kind of get in the flow of the game, get a feel for uh, just kind of the game going to get settled in. And now third and six, pretty obvious passing situation. And he's going to go to the same uh, or a very similar play that he used against Dream. This is P.A. Reed. Now, uh, you might ask, as I would, why would you call uh, why would you call P.A. Reed? Well, uh, T.J. is using a specific type of defense. And basically what we see Henry do throughout this game is he's going to be calling P.A. Reed for the blocking that you get in the play P.A. Reed, I would assume. And that is play action blocking, which is a little better for picking up uh, these this uh, A-gap blitz that uh, is going to be ran by TJ. TJ is in spinner as a base defense. So a couple things that are different. These guys are a little bit more closer to the line of scrimmage. And this uh, blitz angle here, really from these two guys, is really the reason why you run spinner. So we'll see here. Now, right off rip, what are we doing? We're going right. We're going to the right side of the field. So our reads are going to go. We're going to check this clear out, but we're anticipating this is a third right? And then we're going to look to the tight end underneath. Then we're going to look to the crosser. And then on the back end, we're going to look back here. So the main defender we're looking at really is this guy. Once we see this blitz here, as you see, he sends six. Now what's really important, check out PA Reed here. We're able to block it up here on the right, but on the left side, not, not so much. We got a free runner at the quarterback. And so Henry has to make a quick read. TJ's user, this is actually a great read. He runs right to the tight end leaving this little window open and Henry is going to uh, throw this and get a nice completion to move the sticks on third down. So off rip, we get a couple of keys and takeaways as far as what TJ is going to be trying to do defensively. Number one, he's going to be sending a lot of pressure throughout this game. So it's a little different style of defense than Drini was playing. And also we're going to see kind of, again, this uh, spinner base on our main line look. Now, we're going to go to a, uh, another combo here. This is, I believe, it's still in P.A. Reed. And now, if you take a look at this, yeah, this is definitely P.A. Reed. He's kind of freestyling. He has the Hot Route Master ability. The main thing here is we're trying to use P.A. Reed, again, to block this up on the back end. Now, last play, this guy was in a third. So what Henry is going to do, run him on a drag so that he can run away from this outside third. And essentially, the user is going to have to carry this crosser to about this point again we're anticipating this pressure look so if you think about it we're really reading this defender again and really what the question we're asking we're going to peak this streak up here so we peak the streak off rip and then really we're looking here back crosser it's essentially a shell cross so you see here user now right here i mean you might be able to fit this in but this is a tight window again we're sending a lot of pressure so where's the read once he sees the user here, we should go right here. Now, uh, takes, a, takes a little bit too long to get there, has to throw the ball away. Obviously, we're seeing it in slow motion, so it's a little cleaner to us. But for Henry, of course, I'm sure that that was a little bit of a tough read uh, to be able to make. Second and 10, and automatically, hopefully, you're seeing like a theme here. He's sending everybody. I mean, he's sending one, two, three, four, five, six people at Henry. So you see here again, one, two, three, four, five, six. So when you send six, you only have a select few coverage opportunities. Here we get a little cover two, hard flat over here. And then on the back end here, we're going to get this little uh, outside third press. He leaves this guy in the middle of the field. 
And so that means we can easily just check it down to the running back. Good read by Henry. Able to get out of there, get a couple yardage. And you're just seeing, I mean, TJ's just playing different. Most people don't play like this um, this year. They don't send six every play. And honestly, it's kind of what he's doing. Third and one. Let's see what the combo is that he dials up here. And some of these combos are a little bit more what I'd call freestyle combos. We're just trying to get these quick little two-man games. So uh, if we take a look here to the left side, if he plays cover two like he just played, this corner route is going to be wide open. This guy will take the half defender out of the way, okay? If he plays cover three, right, this guy goes to the flat. Again, we're anticipating that we're sending everybody. So who's open if he plays cover three? Your, your seam streak. So we've got a two-man game going over here. On the right side, even more importantly, we have another two-man game going. If this guy bails into an outside third, this guy is going to be open right now. So the user has to take this. If this guy blitzes, then we've got this guy in the flat, okay? So those are really the two main reads. We're probably looking running back first, and then we're looking over to this side over here on the left. So we'll see here's snap of the ball. Again, one, two, three, four, five. This is actually a bluff blitz, which is a really nice adjustment um, or something, something to that extent. And we basically get a middle third here on the right. On the left side, I'm pretty sure this is still a third. So right now, the running back open for a first down. This is an outside third over here. So again, that streak, you could try to peak that. But it's basically, again, let me just back this up so you can understand uh, the basics of the coverage that we're seeing on your screen. We're going to get an outside third, a middle third, a hard flat, an outside third, and we're blitzing everybody. Okay, and then this guy is a really interesting adjustment, but he's basically a bluff blitz assignment. So he's going to cover like a drag, like he'll cover this drag late. So again, the main read here needs to be out here quick, but this guy kind of does something a little weird. So Henry holds it for a second. That second causes him to have to hold it a long time. You see now the running back's dead. This is really not open. He ends up throwing this, and the KO is there. So really good defense by TJ. And automatically you're seeing Henry's not super comfortable, at least right now, with this send everybody kind of pressure. As I watch Henry uh, over the years, I think that this has really been, at least especially last year, where if you saw if watch how he played Dez, it really – Dez kind of exposed this deal of Henry of where – he doesn't love Sin 6, right? It's not that he can't beat it, but he would probably rather beat you just from di dialing up and drawing up great combos than having to make super, super fast reads. Uh, and I think any Madden player is that way, but especially I think you do see this being kind of a tendency for Henry. But anyway, so here, great combo. Okay, so again, this is a little bit of like situations and, and all that. But basically, we have this combo here. So the whole idea is we're anticipating on this fourth and one that this the we're going to put this guy really in the primary conflict. So we're anticipating a cover two. So essentially, if you think about a cover two, this guy has to guard this half of the field. This guy has to guard here. And then really over here, it could be a combination of a lot of different things. What we're probably anticipating is, again, another send six which means the user is going to be right here. So we're going to put the user in a little bit of conflict as well here. If the user kind of stays over in this area of the field, then we can hit this little pocket. The only way this gets defended is if this guy drops down in a hook curl or maybe a hard flat. So we have this post there to split in case you get a coverage like this. So again, uh, a lot going on here. Again, Henry's trying to dial up a dot. Now here we get one, two, three, four, five. He actually goes a little more coverage, and you see right here, again, look, this guy sits, so the running back route is kind of dead. You can't throw that. I mean, you can, but it's if, if this is mid-zone KO, you can't. he's right there. So you see how the defender's in that space. There's this, this right side, completely dead. Can't throw it. Can't throw the running back. So now the read becomes how does the user defend the crosser to the post? That's what we're really looking at. So you see here, kind of let this run a little bit. And you see, see how far down this user is? There is no help over the top. And Henry makes a great throw, hits it right in the back end, and really able to take the top off the defense. So that could have been a real that could have been a stop. Very easily could have he could have definitely got stopped there. Ends up scoring. Um, and I will say it didn't look pretty. <laughs> um, it wasn't it wasn't super clean offensively. TJ's playing really good defense. 
Uh, probably the best defense that I've seen TJ play really all season. And in this tournament, he was he was playing really good defense against Kobo, really good defense against um, against Henry. So let's take a look here. So this first and ten situation, minute thirty nine. Uh, for Henry, again, same situation. We're really looking a lot of pressure is really what's been kind of the, the norm. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, running back. Could be if he's on that route. He's not on this. I think this is traditional uh, verticals with a little, a little underneath route. So where's the user? He's super underneath. So the user is making this a muddy read, but he ends up staying a little too far right. Henry makes a great read under pressure. Able to get up field with the running back here. Nice read. Nice result, really. And Henry, I, you know, I gave him a little bit of critique against this uh, Sin 6, but probably the best five-outer we have in the community. I mean, really, he, he does a great job of this. It's just it's, it, when you send five out all game, it's kind of hard if, if they're making it look the same. It's just a hard way to play. But he's kind of mastered it. Here, again, this is trips. TJ probably was best against trips tight end, honestly. And we really just get almost like a basic DB fire call, I want to say. Kind of? Yeah, not really. Okay, we get a third, a third, a third, or a half. A cloud over here, and then we're, we're blitzing five, and essentially we have the seam to triangle. It's really not uh, tight end, I guess, is where we're going. Gets a red pass. That's uh, under pressure and accurate. Had he blued that, he would have probably got, I think that would have been a completion. So just kind of a tough scene there. Now back into PA Reed again. Why call PA Reed? He wants to play action blocking, probably thinks that play action blocking is better for this pressure. Now, again, I love this. So guess what we're doing in the running back? He's going to the flat right now. This, this has been open. Let's see if he takes it. Unless he's manning him up. Takes this running back route. And now we're upfield one juke away from a huge play. Right, gets a couple yards, third down situation. And again, as you look at some of these play calls, I would say it just seems like Henry's uncomfortable against this defense. It just seems like. Um, but all in all, here we're going to see a really good play. So this is a tendency. So last time uh, Henry went to trips, we got a cover two on the left side. Well, now the trip side is over here. So we're going to get cover two. Blitz, 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 right? And then over here, we've been getting these adjustments pretty much uh, with the user kind of midpointing. We'll see what this looks like. Snap of the ball. And he switches his user last second. So his the way TJ is playing trips, it's basically DB fire two with a quarter, a half, mid third, a, a half. And that's where this play just really the spacing of trips, this fade, it's just really hard to defend. Remember I said spinner. These safeties are a little closer than they are in other defenses as well. And what you see, hard flat, shade underneath vert hook, hard flat, wide open hole shot, great read from Henry, under pressure, able to get out of there. And those are that's a big touchdown. The problem with blitzing every single play is sometimes you get got. And when you get got, there is just nobody on the back end. So that's kind of the way that Henry is kind of playing offensively is he's really just trying to catch him in a bad defense is what it seems like, and then he's able to take the top off. Okay, so uh, situation here for us. Second quarter, two minutes, 11 seconds left in the ball game, and we've got the ball in the middle hash. I'd like to see him run the ball here. Didn't run the ball, no problem, but we get to send everyone. And dagger, really hard to make this read consistently uh, against the heavy pressure. So, again, you're seeing this kind of cat and mouse game, but it's basically, I mean, if the T or Henry is throwing the ball as he's getting sacked almost every play. And to be able to do that with the level of consistency he, is, he has been able to do that, that is huge. So you'll see here we go, Verts. Going back, Pia Reed. This time we're going to block the running or the tight end. We're tired of this pressure here. And this is, again, a little cat and mouse game. So what's the read here? We're really looking right here. Again, this guy is the hot. So if he blitzes, we're going to replace him with this flat if this guy goes back, okay? If if this guy, let's say they play discipline. So this guy goes to the flat. This guy goes back. And you get something like this. Then we're we're highlighting this uh, this guy right here. That's who we're looking at. Does he sit to the flat? Or does he roll back to this route? So 
really the key defender in all of this is this guy and I guess this guy to a degree. So we're looking here. So you look to the right, post, uh, post snap. Okay, we get a peak. You see that's a third. Instantly we see pressure. Ball should go right here. He actually waits on it because the user runs at it. Henry does a great job coming back here and able to hit him. And again, the way users are, you just you can't go right and left. If you're, you're going right or you're going left, you're not going both ways. So that's the idea. First and 10, buck 38. We're going PA read again. Again, has to be for this blocking angle, uh, I would assume, or the, the play action blocking. Now, this was a combo we saw him run against uh, or situation. So, Okay, Okay. so again, what is TJ consistently doing? This guy is in a third almost every single play, right? Well, in this situation, by motioning him in, he is no longer the same matching principles, and he can just put him on this little flat route. It seems really basic and simple, but it's really effective because there's, there's no hard flat defender. We might be in a hook curl, we might be manning up here, but essentially, we're looking, if this guy bails, ball is going over here, and we're going to take some easy yardage. That's the main read. Now, if this guy, let's say he's manned up on him or whatever, that's where these uh, crossing routes are going to be potential options against man coverage, and we're blocking our tight end to try to pick up the pressure. So we see blitz, 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 blitz. We actually get a flat. So you see here, cover two. So now once we see, okay, there's a flat defender here, now we're coming in here and looking at the user. Can we throw this route here or this route here? At this point, ball needs to go here. He's late, which is, I mean, again, this is under pressure. This is all happening very fast. And now you got to throw it here, but situation, probably throw the ball away or run with your quarterback. Not a great route combination, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, again, sometimes you watch these, and this is where I say, like, sometimes you watch these and I go, I just wonder why they're doing that. Now we're going to wide trail. This should be the flat play. No, is what is this? Is this wide trail? Yeah, it is wide trail. Okay. Interesting play call here. Again, we're looking at why, is, why are we calling this? So he, he puts this guy on a swing route to the right. Again, blitz, 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 blitz. Yeah, I mean, I guess. So I guess the thought process here is we're in Y trail. We're anticipating this pressure. If this guy was to run or if we were to run a drag route, the user would probably take the drag, cut it, and take it over that way. So instead, we're going to make the user climb to this tight end streak and this post, and then we'll just kind of float the ball out here to a backside swing route. Again, this is just interesting plays, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, the way TJ's playing defense is so aggressive, and Henry, I think, is just trying to, to just kind of like, I don't know what the right phrase would be, but just kind of try to catch him pass protection-wise. Here we go, a little run play, double team in the nose. Nothing doing. Why run the ball? Clock. We don't want to give TJ the ball back. We already are in a really advantageous position. We want to try to score either by three or seven. If we get three, it's not ideal, but it's okay. Okay, we go back to trip side in here. Now we're going to go to the screen. A little RPO was open. Hand it off. Take the easy yardage. And now we get a first and 10 on the 24-yard line. So again, Henry here, basic, basically, we're just trying to get, ideally we get seven, but but he's okay with three because it has defense playing. And we go to this combo. So I love this play, but again, like, I mean, it's a good play. Uh, this is more of a man-to-man. -man, I don't know what he was thinking. Look, look at the routes. See his facial expression, too. Let's take a look at this. Let's back this up. Okay, so essentially the thought process is we might be able to hit this. Like if he rolls to the middle, this guy will cut underneath it, and you could throw this ball kind of right in here. It's the primary purpose, in my opinion, for this little ghost. So you see here flat. We get a uh, – I don't know what that is, but a half. So now right here, okay, user has to go here. So watching the user, where can we throw? R1, wide open, and then wait, 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 throw it away. So not sure – Again, it, it almost looks like we're just staring down the post. It almost looks like we're just staring down the post. and hold, I, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know why we call that a shot play. I guess because it's hard to score once you get to about this line. It becomes increasingly difficult to score. So we'll see. Just not sure of the play call there. 
And I love this. All right, let's see. Now, this is a call. So we got blitz, 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 blitz. Outside third again. Hard flat or cross man or something. Tight ends open. Tight ends open. Looks like he's trying to throw the ball away. Yeah. Yeah, just it's – TJ is speeding him up, and it is working, in my opinion. Like, he's got 14 points, but it has not been easy, 14. It has not been an easy 14. Let's see what we get here. Okay, third and 10. I'm not sure the purpose of the tight end route. We've got a wheel here. I don't know why we would run that. Uh, circle is open for a touchdown. Don't want to throw that. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. This is a cool combo. Um, let me talk about this just briefly. So, again, every single time this is an outside third. It's been that way all game. Outside third. Outside third every single time. So, even if he matches to the end, he's going to play that in route when you cut. The defender is going to be on the outside hip. So there's inside leverage. So as long as this guy is not sitting right here and the user goes that way, the in route will be wide open. So you see right here, okay, boom, 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 boom. Now, we look over here, user runs right automatically. If we get if we can block this up, Henry's anticipating this right there. Finally, comes open, open, easy read. So good read by him. Sets up a red zone situation. Not a lot to see here, honestly. Um, Henry's going to run the ball at least twice, I would assume. He likes the swing stack power o against 6-1. Not sure why. Probably because we're trying to – let's see what this is. Okay, okay. Okay, so it's basically – huh. That's not bad. It's not a bad run. Didn't get a great run, run stick there. Henry's not known for his run stick. He, <laughs> he will tell, first one to tell you he does not like to run. Does not do well with running the ball. Second and goal, eight seconds. Uh, I could see a pass or a run here. Either way, I could see either one being fine. Ends up going to the run again. He almost gets that. Ends up getting bagged. Third down, three seconds. I think he's going to kick his three. He does kick his three, and now we're going to go into halftime. So now uh, it's 17 to 10. TJ is actually going to get the ball to start the second half. And as a really nice drive, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, actually, no. This was the drive where he got bagged. Actually, now that I remember. So he gets stopped on a fourth down. Henry gets ball. Now this is a completely new or just an interesting situation. But basically – Henry is in complete control of the game. So right here, you just don't want to make him you, you just don't want to let TJ back in the game. So again, this little Mickey Mouse, like not Mickey Mouse, but just this little game here. Like if he runs a third, this is open. You see, blitz everybody, flats wide open. We take the running back because that was where we looked first. That's fine with me. You know, that's fine with me. Good read. Again, one of the things that you want to think about as an offensive player when you're trying to put your routes on the field, one of the things I have to start thinking about more is like the timing of when the route was supposed to be thrown. I think that's a super, super big factor. So like, for example, if he, he might run the ball here. Yeah, this is just a basic run inside zone. But essentially, you want your routes to kind of time together and fit together. So when you're looking at the flat, then you don't want the corner to be coming open at the same time you're looking at the flat, right? So here we go again, a little run play, second and nine. He should run the ball here. He might not as my... Things going crazy. Goes to trips. He loves this play right here. This is one of my favorite plays. A little hitch right here. This is so good. So the hitch. What's the purpose of the hitch on the numbers? If this guy is in a cloud, he will suck into this hitch route right here. So this will this will make this defender basically stand right here at a wall, and he will not get to the sideline. So he, uh, TJ has to user this tight end post. Otherwise, it can be thrown right here. So off rip, what's your read? Well, we're going to peek here, okay, kind of see the coverage. Once we see that, now we have this window. And essentially, we're just saying, what choice does he make? In this situation, TJ is going with the route, going with the route. But then look, he bails off of the route. Had we waited, this is a touchdown. 
Now, pressure, we're still in a good spot. Henry makes a, a, a little bit more of a decisive read, and he says, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna take where you vacated with your user because you were, if you remember, TJ's user was standing here. He rolled back, and then he kind of went over into this area, and then he was basically coming back down, which is a good user by TJ, but essentially Henry's taking where he vacated and thinking he could cut this up, and he almost gets it. Let's see if he gets it here. Catches it. Actually, no, he does get it. Yeah, touchdown. For some reason, I thought he got stopped there. Good read. The, he had both the tight end and the post, or he had both those routes open. It just came down to, um, look right here, see all that space. See all that space that's vacated? Really, really nice uh, design. I love that route combo in the red zone. So now TJ is down by two scores. He's got a score. He does end up scoring, I believe. Um, and then uh, Henry's going to get another drive here. We'll see what he does. So right now, again, situation 454. If you get three, pretty much the game's over. So a couple things here. I think TJ goes to a little bit more. I mean, he's still sending six. Good read. And I think Henry just gets more comfortable with the send six as the game goes on too. I think you see that. Like in the second half, he's way more efficient uh, than he was, in my opinion, in the first half. Some of the route combos. Again, we're just trying to design quick hitters against this pressure. I wish TJ would have caught a little more coverage. I think if he had mixed in a little coverage, it would have made it more difficult for some of these combos because most of these combos are, like I said, just little quick two-man games, trying to make a quick read. Because situationally, he's doing this. So if he's doing this, you can only cover, you know, you, you can't cover everything. Version 10, we go to... I don't know what this is. The drag. I don't know what that route what that route combo is. It's almost a D-line pick. That didn't work. Okay, let's look at his reads though. So it looks like so he snaps the ball. It looks like he's throwing this. But he's late on it. I mean, you got to go here. Maybe he's just throwing this away. He might just be throwing that away. He probably is. It seems like if you were going to throw that, you'd throw that a little sooner. All right, vertical is a little table. So back again, what are we doing? What are we? What's the purpose of the table route? If this guy blitzes and this guy rolls to the middle, this guy cannot be right. If he takes the running back, then we have a touchdown over top. And then if the corner stays with this guy, then the running back should have all this grass to the right side. So it's really a nice combo. And you'll see, snap, he's open, take it. But again, user comes this way. So Henry does a great job of knowing I've got this backside window to hit that little slot post. Really nice route. That's been, honestly, that play right there, I don't know that TJ's had an answer for that play. That play has been open almost every time. Just a nice little table route. You don't see that much this year. All right, so now we're in clock territory. Uh, the main reason why is because, like I said, if Henry gets a field goal, it becomes a two-possession game. Virtually impossible for TJ to win. As long as Henry can take some clock, while he's doing this so what he should be doing here is snapping this ball relatively deep into the play clock probably running more so uh just trying to again take the time off the clock off the clock another run nice gets out of there with a the juke left one-on-one -on -one. really nice uh, and that's great for henry because now you can take a lot of time because this should go down to two minutes and 30 seconds it's going to put tj in a position to start having to call timeouts which is then going to make it much, much less likely for TJ to win. So it's smart by Henry, and these are the little things that just make Henry so good, just these game management situations and really not, not forcing yourself to make more plays than you have to. I feel like that's what we saw a lot uh, in this game, Henry taking kind of the simple plays and really kind of catching TJ in uh, a couple situations. I mean, you think about it, he had – Really, the, the first 14 points for sure um, were basically, you know, big, big hitters. And then and then I think he kind of settled in against the pressure and started just quick dotting it. So third and four, two-minute warning. And we are going to be looking at my man Wesley's offense as well. But third and four, minute 56. Not a dire situation. You don't have to get this, okay? You don't have to get this. So pay attention to that because Henry will um, – he'll go to some other stuff here. 
who ends up running the ball, gets out, gets the first down, and now the game's basically over. Uh, basically over, 100%. So, yeah, I mean, this is basically it. From here, you're just going to get run plays and an inside zone, and then, you know, this is just basic clock. Now, I will say, uh, we saw this a lot, but this stretch out of wing tight is a basically a cutback right up there for a potential score. But anyway, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. This was Henry's offense against TJ. We're going to get into some of his defensive uh, stuff in other videos, as well as taking a look at Wesley's stuff heading into the Madden Bowl final.